Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I'm going to show y'all how I made these Caribbean blue fused glass cabochons. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay guys, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Here I have a ceramic mold that's been sealed with four layers of mold release and my favorite mold release is Zip Coatings. It's a boron nitride aerosol lubricant. It fires up to, I believe, 1,800. I only fire up to 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit and it's been working perfectly for me. So I love this stuff. Um, be sure to shake it really, really well always 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 wear your heavy duty respirator with it uh this stuff is no joke it is not good for your lungs like uh, -uh. i also always mask up whenever um we're cleaning the molds as well uh i'm not gonna lie i'm pretty lazy oftentimes i will uh clean the molds um we use like a nylon brush and a dremel or a stiff bristled brush if it's just like you know, getting the surface stuff off. And then um, we'll go through and do four layers of spray. And then we'll do a firing. And then we'll get the, like, kind of turn it over and tap it to get all the cabs out. And then I'll oftentimes go to go through and just focus spray in the cavities, um, again, before uh, do a second firing, and then we'll clean it again. It just helps us save a little bit on the zip and... It seems to be working out but I'm still I feel like very new to fused glass um, relatively I've only been doing it for about a year so I feel like there's still a whole lot for me to learn so if you guys have any advice on using molds with glass fusing I would love to hear from you so the colors oh okay I'm gonna go over the tools a little bit more I just have some little scoops a wiser crafter would measure the weight in grams or something of the glass that they're using but uh well here we are so uh we've got some scoops your mold your mold release and some fine bristle brushes now also i fire in my paragon cs16 or cl16s um everything i'm talking about y'all is linked down in the video description below too if you feel like um you want to go and check something out uh but a lot of the molds that I use uh, will oftentimes be two cell or even single cell and those are perfect for using in a microwave kiln uh, which can be we do kind of large production of cabs because that's kind of the focus of our business now is uh, providing materials to other crafters so that you can use our artwork and your artwork but if you just want to make a couple of cabs for yourself a microwave kiln is a great way to go so uh, also very similar tool setup as well as I believe so the colors that we're going to be using today i'm using a fine grit this is not a powder it's just fine um peacock green opal now opal does not mean opalescent like how it would if you're i don't was i even in frame i'm sorry here you go um opal does not mean opalescent and shiny the way that it would if we were like talking gemstones the opal actually means opaque um, is basically what that has come down to and I get most of my glass from either art glass supplies or Delphi glass um, I really like Art glass supplies for free. They have amazing prices and I am using COE 96 So the firing schedule that's down in the video description is applicable for uh, COE 96 but bullseyeglass.com has some great resources for firing schedules for if you're using 90 COE I also, in future tutorials, would really love to do some experiments with using uh, soft soda glass, like how I use for lamprey glass in these molds, just to see if I can use it with my stubbies and different things like that. Um, so we're, we've got the peacock green opal. We have a medium grit. You can see that's a much larger chunk than the fine in pale blue, which is super duper pretty. And then I'm going to be capping with a very small amount of mosaic clear that's even bigger still um from the medium like it's there's like medium coarse and then mosaic i think <laughs> and then i'm going to be using some little tiles of glass this was three millimeter sheet glass that i would gotten from delphi glass and then used my tile nippers to nip up some little squares of it um you can also buy pre-cut 
and these are the tile nippers that I use. And if you guys are interested in a tutorial about nipping up glass, um, just to see kind of how I do it, because I don't think I do it very well, but I get the job done, and sometimes that's all it takes. <laughs> so you don't have to be perfect, you just gotta do the thing. But yeah, I just go through with like tile nippers, and I'm gonna actually show you real quick. Always, always, always wear your eye protection. And I'll just line it up with the edge of the glass and nip. And that made a quite small piece, but sometimes I need pieces that are little like that for, especially if I'm using very small molds or trying to do like um, like a sheet layout or something. So to make this color scheme that we're focusing on today, I'm going to start with a small scoop with the Peacock Green Opal. And this is, I think... Well, welcome to America. It's a dash. So however much a dash is, uh, but I'm not even using the full dash. I just want to cover up very lightly. So I'm even, I'm using half a dash. I don't know what that is in chicken nuggets, but I just want enough to put a little bit of color there in the back of our mold. And whenever I'm making a bunch of cabs like if I want to do a bracelet that's a bunch of cabs all strung together or if I'm doing a shop update and this has been one of our best received colors so if we're doing a shop update and I want to have a whole bunch of them or if I want to send them out in our craft along kits I'll come through and work on an entire sheet being all one color but again, if I'm doing this for my own personal use or fulfilling uh, custom orders or like inventory or something, there's no reason why you can't do every single cell a completely different color scheme. So long as they are all the same COE, which is the coefficient of expansion, um, which just means that they'll all anneal at the same rate. And you certainly do not want to be mixing different COEs in the same mold. Um, I do work with both 96 and 90 and I mean technically 104 as well though I use that on my torch but uh, in my studio but I never 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 mix them because you're that's you're guaranteed going to get cracking and compatibility issues so and I'm just going to kind of pick that up and shake it and that got it kind of evenly distributed there we go. So now I'm going to come through with this medium pale blue. And by capping this over, I'm going to do like, I don't know how much of this are we going to do. I'm going to do like a fourth of a teaspoon of this blue, I think. So half of my scoop. And I'm just going to lay this in. That one is a little heavy handed, but we'll see how it comes out in the end result. And I'm just kind of plopping it on in there because oftentimes if I try to be my naturally inclined control freak self and you know micromanage where every single little particle of glass goes, they float around during firing a little. You'll get a little bit of shifting sometimes, just depending, um, unless you do like a tack fuse first. There's a little dog hair in there. It is okay, actually, if you get some dog hair in this, because, well, the dog hair doesn't survive the uh, 1,500 degrees <laughs> Fahrenheit that this gets fired at. So I'm just going to level this out just a little bit. There we are. Um... But yeah, I kind of let the glass do its own thing because oftentimes that comes out far more beautifully and in such unexpected ways than if I tried to go in and micromanage the position of every little piece. Like uh, when Randy and I, that's my partner, um, were first starting to work with fused glass, he had gone through and was like very carefully placing all the dichro to make like this cool inlay. And then we just went straight to full fuse without tacking first. Uh, which tack fuse is like a lower temperature than the full fuse so the glass sticks together but doesn't turn liquid and swimmy and he was i mean it came out beautifully don't get me wrong but he was pretty disappointed he was like oh because <laughs> he spent like an hour <laughs> trying to get all that kind of put together 
but also I would love to point out fused glass lends itself to experimentation and creativity and something that may not have worked for me may work fabulously for you so don't take my word for it try it out for yourself and see what you think and so now I'm using our clear mosaic for it and I'm just laying just a touch of this stuff down I'm gonna be kind of messy with it right now but I wanted to be able to stabilize our color very slightly. Just because um, I'll show you in a moment what it looks like if you underfill a mold or if you don't do this blue layer or this uh, clear layer rather. And I really just want enough to kind of cap it off a little bit. And this is something that if we were putting dichro in here, which is really gorgeous as well, um, this would help to stabilize and cap off the dichro so that the metallic layer on the dichroic glass wouldn't float to the surface. And if you're new to glass or just watching this video because you like my other videos and you're like, hey, what's this? Um, <clears throat> I don't mean to be like, I, I don't know, we had gotten some comments that people were like, I have no stinking clue what you're talking about. So if you have any questions or anything, just leave them down below and I'll try my best to help you out. I'm trying to be as helpful as I can be, um, while still juggling other things. So I don't mean to be vague if it's, if I'm not explaining something. Okay, so we've capped with a little bit of that mosaic clear and I'm actually going to bring the camera down so that you can see from the side. So you can see this is how high we've gotten so far, which normally I'm like super duper mounted up on these, but we'll show you in the next step. We are going to be adding these little tiles, which sometimes if I can help it, I will use double thick for this because this is just three millimeter sheet glass. If I can help it, I'd use a double thick, which is a six millimeter sheet glass, which just you just get less sliding and stuff if you just do the double thick but we can stack one two and three of these bad boys <laughs> and I'm gonna actually gonna bring it down to the side okay so I have my mold moved over into my kiln that way it doesn't have to move again and I'm just gonna come through and stack three tiles onto each um, cavity of the mold trying to make sure that nothing's touching the edges if I can help it and I also want to try to make sure that nothing is going to be you know sliding around like this one here is really teetery so I want to see if I can't use a larger piece of glass on the base layer that way as I stack up it's less like a tottery Jenga tower. So, and I'm just going to go through and do that on all of them. And then I'm going to fill the kiln the rest of the way and I'm going to get it firing. Okay, so I have the kiln completely loaded for what I'm going to run tonight. And I've even got some little puddle cabs popping up over here, but that's for a different day. So I'm just going to gently... lower the kiln turn that on now I have this pre-programmed um, and the what I have it programmed with is down in the video description um, and some kilns like different kilns have different um, programming stuff <laughs> this is not my specialty so look up the instructions for your machine um, I'm going to go to user, going to be lots of beeping. This is the third program that I have set in here. Um, the rate one, that's the rate at which the heat is increasing. So it's at 275 Fahrenheit until it gets to 1215, so 1215 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's going to hold that for 35 minutes. My second rate is going to be 50 degrees. Uh, and that's per hour, I do believe, until I get up to 1250. And then that's going to hold for another 35. My third rate is 275 until I get to 1330. And that's going to hold for 15. My fourth rate is 350 until I get up to full fuse. That's 1500. And that's going to hold for 20 minutes. 
and then full is just as fast as the kiln will naturally cool like I don't open it and vent any of the heat or anything I just let it reduce in temperature down to 950 and that's going to hold once it gets down to 950 it's going to hold for two hours and then I end the program by the rate six is just zero that lets it know that it doesn't need to do anything else it's done so and it's on Alrighty, so, y'all. So it is the following morning. The kiln had cooled to 111 degrees, so I had switched it off, and then remembered I was shooting a tutorial. So, ooh, oh, that's looking nice. Now they're still, they're still just a tad warm, so I'm gonna leave this open and let them cool the rest of the day. But let's get a more up close look of how these are looking. So here you can see how all those little puddles melted out. That's what I was, oh yeah, that's the, we powdered that peacock green opal with the pale blue on top. That came out really, really pretty. Actually, I think on this one, I put in some sky blue as well. So you can see those guys down there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to let this cool so that we can get a much better look at what's going on. Okay, so the kiln has cooled, the molds inside of it have cooled, and I want to show you how they're looking. Now you can see there's a little bit of scuzz on this one. Maybe you can see, I don't know. <laughs> um, but that will wash off. But they came out really cool, so I'm just going to take this and whoop, you can see a lot of them just pop right out of the mold. Sometimes I have to tap it on my hand a little bit more and sometimes if we get some that are quite stubborn we'll tap it on the table but most of the time it doesn't take like that is not necessary so I'm just clunking them into a bowl here with some water that way <clears throat> the powder doesn't spread and I'm going to take these over and clean them up and then I'll show you how they look so just running some water. We've got these here. I'm gonna get all the dust off of me. And I come in and scrub off all of that boron nitride. And we do have a catchment under the sink so that it doesn't clog up the pipes. But you can see, hopefully, I move my hand, how nice that comes out. There's still a little bit of scuzz on it, but that just wipes right off. That little bit of light through it. absolutely love how this design or this uh color scheme comes out so i'm going to get these other ones washed up and then show you how they look so after washing and drying this is how the cabs came out and y'all i really do think these are probably some of my favorite colors they're just so luminous almost just with the way that the light cuts through them in that nice little bit of background because you can see this is how they look on the back that little bit of opaque glass gives you just enough texture and depth that they're just I mean that is so cool you guys I love it and I love the bubbles that are in there now if you want less bubbles you can do in your firing schedule something called a bubble squeeze and that can help but using finer grains of frit if you visualize with me this uh piece of glass has a surface area around it where air is touching it and if you fill a mold with a bunch of little pieces of glass there's going to be a whole lot of air kind of trapped in there there's a whole bunch of like nooks and crannies and different things whereas if you take a mold and fill it with larger pieces there's less opportunity less um surface area if you're using the same weight you know uh, the same volume of material the bigger the piece the less bubbles you're gonna have 
I'm not a scientist. I probably explained that wrong, but I hope you guys get the idea. Um, so that's where the bubbling comes from. Uh, so just something to be mindful of. But, oh my gosh, I'm going to look at these pretty stones a little bit more. Wow. I love them. Love them so much. I want to try this with... Um, a variety of different color schemes and different color pairings because I think it'd be really cool to do some purples and stuff and try to get that nice because it was stacking the glass in the center gives us a little bit of this like vignette I think I pronounced that wrong too um <laughs> around the edges of our stones where the color um of the translucent glass is much denser than it is in the center which again I think gives some really cool depth now, these ones, I did very similar technique. You can see this picked up on the texture of the mold, but I used the opaque in the back. And then this one, I used the same color schemes as this guy, but I added in just a little bit of sky blue over into this side, whereas so we have the pale blue over here and the sky blue over here. So if you're following along with our videos, I highly encourage you guys to experiment with adding in some different colors and just just I don't know experimentation keeps things spicy so definitely try out different stuff but love the way that these look um, but yeah and if you guys like our cabochons please check out our website backtearthcreations.com because we post new cabs for sale every week be sure to sign up for our newsletter because we send out exclusive coupons um, that can get you a pretty nice discount and if you really love our cabs and want to uh, support our channel beyond just liking sharing and subscribing and being generally awesome as you do uh, consider joining our craft along club for as little as a dollar a month or twelve dollars a year you can get access to our exclusive live streams more coupons uh, that get you an even bigger discount and the more you pledge the more you get so we actually send out monthly mystery cab kits as well um so that way we can keep you in stock with um, shiny cabochons to wrap. So, yeah. <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us today in this video. I really hope that it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. If you enjoy our cabs and would like to purchase them, they are on our website. Uh, we do new shop updates on... Typically, we start shop updating on Friday, but we're done by Monday, and that's whenever we do our shop update tours and giveaways. So be sure to check out the calendar on our website, backtoearthcreations.com, where it has all of our events for the current month listed. Um, also, you could sign up for our newsletter because every time we have a new video or a shop update or a live stream or anything like that, we send a notification off to you directly to your inbox so you don't have to rely on YouTube uh, notifications um <laughs> but also we do featured artisan segments uh and that's in our newsletter as well so if you're interested in being a featured artisan or anything like that all of the information is down in the video description or also on our website so uh be sure to kind of check that out it's a hub for everything that's going on here at back to earth creations also if you really like our cabochons, please consider joining our craft along club where we send out mystery assortment boxes every month at a huge discount. So uh, that's, I don't know, I, I think it's pretty exciting, but I also really like shiny stuff. So if you have any questions, I think I already said that, but truly, if y'all have any questions, contact us, leave a comment down below, hit us up on our email. We've got you. Like we're here to help you guys out. And until next time, happy crafting. Mwah!